Hi all, in this video I want to show to you some reverse polarity protection circuit. Please remember to subscribe. Let's begin. The first and simplest form of reverse polarity protection is made using only a diode. When connected correctly, the current goes from the battery through the diode and the load and then back to the battery. But when connected backwards, the diode blocks the current because of the intrinsic PN junction. And so we are safe. Let's try this out. Okay, as you can see, this setup is really simple just a diode and a resistor. Now I'm gonna turn on the supply. So we have a 33 milliamp current flowing. Now I'm gonna swap the two cables. We must see 0 milliamp flowing. So we are protected. So one big advantage here is the simplicity, we really need just one component. It's a cheap protection as diode have a negligible cost and we can use it in really high voltage circuits as we can have diodes with 1 kV reverse breakdown voltage or more. But unfortunately diodes are not suitable for low voltage electronics as they have a voltage drop that depends on the diode you choose. And so the higher the current, the bigger the power loss. We can mitigate this problem using a Schottky diode that exhibits lower voltage drop than the regular one, but keep in mind that they have a higher leakage current. This could be even some milliamps, so pay attention on what Schottky diode you choose. And still, the Schottky diodes cannot be used in a low voltage electronics. If you have 2 AA battery for example, then you are left only with 2.6 volts. Also remember that the greater the reverse breakdown voltage, the greater the voltage drop of the diodes. Another reverse polarity protection circuit could be made using a fuse and a diode in this configuration. When connected correctly, the current goes from the battery through the fuse and the load and then back to the battery. When connected in reverse, the current goes from the battery through the diode and then through the fuse that after blows up. Let's check if this works. This time I added also the fuse. As you can see, we have as before the diode and well, the circuit is as before. And now I'm going to turn on the supply. Uh, we see 34 milliamp flowing through which is as before, and now I'm gonna swap the two cables. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the supply again, and see the fuse blown up, because the current flows through the diode to the fuse, and so it blows. But obviously, if you try to, like, swap the two cables again, you don't have any current flowing because, well, the fuse is blown. So you have to replace it every time. Now this method offers low voltage drop and you may think this voltage drop is zero, but it's not. All the fuses have resistance, just check your fuse datasheet. A big disadvantage of this protection is that your fuse takes some time to blow depending on the current is flowing. And on that instance all of your circuit is subject to reverse voltage. So for some circuit this protection circuit is not reliable. But if for you it's ok, remember to size the diode properly. In fact, at that moment the current through your diode will be big. You have to make sure your diode can take that current for that time. Still, you have to replace the blown fuse every time reverse polarity protection happens. But it's indeed a cheap way to get reverse polarity protection. Another reverse polarity protection circuit is this one. We use a P-channel MOSFET with the drain connected to the positive of the battery and the source to the load side. For the moment, let's forget about the zener and the resistor. Our P-channel MOSFET has an intrinsic body diode, and this will conduct until the PMOS is fully turned on. To turn on our PMOS, the gate voltage has to be more negative than the source voltage by at least the gate threshold voltage. This time, to help you, I will do an example. Let's first consider a 9 volt battery with a P channel MOSFET that has a body diode drop of 1 volt and a threshold voltage of minus 3 volt. When the battery is connected correctly, we have 9 volt before the internal diode and 8 volt after that. 
And since the gate is tied to ground, the VGS voltage is now minus 8 volt, which is lower than our minus 3 volt. And so our MOSFET turns fully on, and we can forget about the internal diode. When connected in reverse, the gate voltage is more positive than the one on the source, so the MOSFET does not turn on and we have no current flow. The zener resistors are here to protect the gate when the battery voltage is higher than the maximum allowable VGS voltage. Although less used, you can also use an unchanneled MOSFET, it will work just fine. Ok, let's try it out. Ok, as you can see I have the P-channel MOSFET on the breadboard. And now I'm gonna turn on the power supply. And we have 36 milliamp flowing through it. Again, we swap the two wires. And we have no current flow, which means we are protected. Now, this reverse polarity protection circuit offers really low voltage drop, which depends on the RDS zone of your MOSFET times the current. It's also reliable and can be used in low voltage application as long as you pick the right MOSFET. I don't see any big disadvantage on this, just remember that this works well as reverse polarity protection but does not help with reverse current protection. Another reverse polarity protection circuit could be done with a relay. This is the circuit and when the battery is connected properly, the current flows through this diode, then the coil and then back to the battery. Once the switch is closed, the current flows from the battery through the switch and then through the load. And finally back to the battery. But when connected wrong, the diode doesn't allow the current to flow the other way, so the coil is not energized and the switch can't close. This diode here is just a flyback diode. Let's try it. And now I'm gonna try to use this relay circuit here that was made uh, with PCB Wait, the sponsor of this video. <laughs> if you want really good looking PCB, I highly suggest to check PCBWay.com using the link in the description. They can also assemble PCBs for you or offer 3D printing and CNC machining with tons of material to choose with. Just check PCBWay.com. Link in the description. Okay, let's plug it in and see if this works. And now I'm gonna turn on the supply. We have 17 milliamps flowing through it. And um, this time I use 5 volts because the coil is 5 volt. Now I'm gonna again swap the two cables. Now I'll turn on the supply again, and as you can see we have 0 milliamp again, so we are safe. We can also use a slight variation of the circuit to make it work at higher voltages using a Zener diode. Now I like this circuit and the way it works. The voltage drop at the output is dependent only on the contact resistance of the relay. But the big problem is that the relay continuously draw current to keep the coil energized. And this can be even tens of milliamp. And also relay surface from mechanical wear. But other than that, I think it's fine. One thing I want you to note is that if you have a 5V relay and a 5V source, then depending on the diode you choose, you may not be able to turn it on because of the voltage drop of the diode. So at least use a shaft key diode for this circuit. As last we have dedicated ICs. There are really tons of them and they can have a simple circuit or fairly complex one. They usually offer other protection features like over voltage protection, over current protection and so on. I will try an needle diode module that incorporates an LHAM 74610, which is one of those dedicated ICs. Ok, let's turn on the supply. We have 36 milliamp flowing through uh, the resistor. So, as before, we swap the two cables. And as before, we have, well, this time we have some leakage current because maybe this module is not perfect. Ok, 
could be. Let's try. We have 51 microamp, so this could be uh, good for some circuit, but bad for others. Obvious advantages of those ICs are the low voltage drop and the various other protection feature. Unfortunately, those ICs are only good at some tens of volts, so not suitable for high voltage application. Now there is one other fun reverse polarity protection circuit that uses a bridge rectifier. And basically, no matter how you connect the battery, you will end up with the same output polarity. Okay, this is the diode bridge I'm gonna use, is this tiny one, but it's compatible with the breadboard, so it's pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the supply. We have 31 milliamp. And now I'm gonna zap the two cables. As you can see, we have again 31 milliamp. Because no matter how you swap the two cables, you will always end up with the same output polarity. And we can see this even better using an LED. Now the LED is on, I'm gonna swap the two cables. And the LED is still on. It's only a fun one that I consider not really usable, as the voltage drop this time is of two diodes instead of one. To eliminate the voltage drop problem, you could use an ideal bridge rectifier. Although, let me tell you, you must be crazy. Okay guys, tell me what you think, comment, subscribe, and hope you enjoyed.